What's good, Raider Nation? It's your boy, Sanji, back at it with another video. Uh, today, I am not in my home studio. As you guys can obviously tell, I'm recording with my cell phone. Uh, but I did want to talk a little bit about training camp, some of the things that I'm hearing, some of the things that I've seen at the same time. Uh, I also want to uh, talk a little bit about Gerald McCoy because, as you guys know, the video I put out about Gerald McCoy, it was actually a video prior to us signing McCoy. So I really want to talk about him specifically and some of the things he brings to the Raiders. Um, and we got we got our first training camp fight, man. So uh, let's let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss it. Um, first and foremost, let's just get into Gerald McCoy. Um, I I am dropping a film breakdown of McCoy. Uh, it'll probably drop later today or tomorrow morning. Um, at the same time, I wrote an article which uh, kind of breaks down some of the things he'll do for the Raiders. I put some film clips in that article. Um, I'll pin that article in the comments below if you guys want to check it out. You guys can check it out. Um, <clears throat> I'll also pin it tomorrow when I when I release the game film or, or today, whenever I decide to release it. Um, but yeah, man, let's talk a little bit about McCoy. You know, one of the things that people don't think about is the fact that Gerald McCoy is a Hall of Fame football player, right? And, you know, you can argue against it if you want, but you just look at the numbers, you look at the statistics. The guy has almost 60 sacks. And chances are he'll probably, you know, if he plays two or three more years, he'll still end up with another 10 sacks, right? If he plays three years, he'll, he'll get 10 sacks. Um, he's a Hall of Fame player. Not many defensive tackles have more sacks than McCoy. And I know people will say, well, you know, he, he he's not going to be all that great for the Raiders, which I kind of disagree with. Uh, here's the thing. He is 33. He is coming back from an injury. But Richie Incognito is 38, right? Incognito's five years older. When it comes to O-line, D-line, quarterbacks, those positions can generally play much longer, right? Uh, because they don't rely on, on their athleticism as much, right? For example, Tom Brady is well into his 40s. But he's not running around, right? Like, all he ever does is he steps up in the pocket, he steps to the side, he makes a pass. You look at Richie Incognito. How much does R Richie actually, you know, how, how much does he actually move, right? He'll move, like, three or four yards max, right, to get to that second level. Or he'll block the guy right in front of him. At the same time, when you look at someone like Jordan McCoy, how much is he going to have to move? Probably not that much, right? Like, there might be plays where teams run, like, outside zones and stuff like that. And that would be the only concern I have. But uh, in terms of when when people are trying to block McCoy, like, one-on-one -on -one trying to block him, how many guards and centers can actually block a player like that? He's huge. He's a big football player. On top of that, he's gotten so many sacks, so many tackles and tackles for a loss. He's one of those guys that's going to be very difficult to block. And I know, again, people will say, well, he's 33. I think for O-line, D-line, quarterbacks, age does not matter. Now, obviously, you know, we'll see what happens this season. But I think that, uh, I, I think McCoy is going to end up playing so much for the Raiders in pass rushing. And I think he's going to have such a big impact. Um, you know, truth be told, I, I'm very glad the Raiders brought in McCoy. Um, for the longest time, the Raiders, ha you know, haven't been addressing their pass rush. They haven't addressed their defensive tackle spot. Like, the last good defensive tackle we've had was Tommy Kelly, Richard, Sherm, uh, Richard Seymour, right? Those two guys are probably the last good defensive tackles we had. Um, now we got Jim McCoy. And again, I know he's old, so we'll see how, you know, that, that kind of plays out. You guys know that I was saying the Raiders need to go and draft um, Christian Barmer with, with, with our first-round pick. I was on that hype. And guess what? Christian Barmore right now is looking like a superstar. I've talked to a guy that I know at, uh, at the Patriots camp. He's a beat writer. He covers uh, the Patriots. And he told me that he's, I think he's hurt right now, but uh, when he's healthy and he's playing, he's dominant. He can't be stopped. And uh, maybe the Raiders should have taken him over Alex Leatherwood. Either way, we'll see how that shapes out, you know, in five, 10 years down the line. But um, right now, when you look at the Raiders' defensive line, we're so much better with Joe McCoy, and I'm really glad the Raiders brought him in. Um, at the same time, I want to shift focus a little bit. Uh, but, but before we do, um, tomorrow I will be dropping the film breakdown, or maybe later today. So make sure you guys tune in for that. Um, but let's jump forward. Let's talk a little bit about camp. Now, there was a fight 
Um, the guy that I spoke to said that he could not see, and I think that was kind of the, the thing with all the people. Uh, it was during team drills, so they are kind of far away from, from people. Uh, I'm sorry, it was 11 on 11, so they were kind of far away from uh, where, where everyone was kind of standing. Um, but Jared Jones-Smith apparently ripped someone's helmet off. Uh, it was an O-lineman versus a D-lineman. So I'm wondering which D-lineman it is. Uh, Jared Jones-Smith uh, is the backup left tackle, so... Um, I'm going to assume it had to have been like one of the defensive ends, right? Like uh, maybe a defensive tackle, one of the three tech guys. Um, so maybe it was like Cleveland Farrell, maybe it was like, you know, Gary Green or, or one of these other guys playing defensive end. It could have been like Solomon Thomas, but Solomon Thomas doesn't seem like a fighter. So I don't really know. We'll probably get a little bit more, uh, a little bit later on, on that specifically. Um, but we need that. We need guys that are fighting because that shows passion, right? Now we don't need someone hurting another player, right? Obviously not, but... Uh, fights, you know, that's good. It's, it's good for uh, the team. It's good to get people going. Um, at the same time, our offensive line, first and second string, looks more clear right now. So um, let's discuss that. Obviously, left tackle to left to right tackle is 100% confirmed. Left tackle is Colton Miller. Left guard is Richie Incognito. Center is Andre James. Right guard is Denzel Good for now. And right tackle is Alex Leatherwood. Let's talk about Denzel Good. I say for now because right now, um, John Simpson's also taking first team reps. So, uh, for, for example, with the defensive line, um, you got the four guys starting, right? You got uh, obviously Max and Yannick. You got Quentin and Jonathan Hankins. Those four guys are in there. But when it comes to the first guy that rotates in, like literally the first guy that comes in for the defensive line is Cleveland Farrell. So, Farrell comes in right away, takes those reps. Um... And then for the offensive line, it's the same thing. John Simpson comes in right away. And he works in with the first stringers, which tells me the Raiders are really high on Simpson. And here's the thing. I've been watching Simpson with all the practice footage that's out there, um, all the things we can kind of see. And he looks good, man, which is great. I'm really glad to hear that because when the season started last, he did not look that good. Obviously, in the, in the last couple games he played, he looked a little bit better. Uh, but right now, it looks like he's the guy that's coming in. Um, to kind of take a little bit of first team reps with Denzel Good. So that'll be a competition to kind of keep an eye on. Uh, another one that's kind of interesting is the backups that are coming in. Uh, left tackle to right tackle. So left tackle, the, the backup to Colt Miller is Jared Jones-Smith. The backup left guard is Lester Cotton. And who would have thought that Lester Cotton, the guard that the Raiders brought in that famous 2019 draft, uh, he could be the guy for the Raiders. And... Uh, you know, Parker Inger looks terrible. Um, from what I've heard and from what I've observed, Parker Inger does not look good. So I don't see him beating out Lester Cotton. Remember, the Raiders need four offensive guards on this roster. We have Richie, Denzel, and Simpson as locks. They're the top three guys. And then the fourth guy is up for grabs. You know, Parker Inger was a guy. Uh, Lester Cotton. And there's a couple other guys, but... I think Lester Cotton's going to end up winning that job, man. Right now, he's coming in as the second string left guard. Uh, Nick Martin is coming in as the second string center. And then, of course, John Simpson as the second string right guard. And then Brandon Parker as the second string right tackle. Obviously, uh, Sam Young retired. So uh, that allowed Brandon Parker to go from the backup left tackle to the backup right tackle. And then Jerry Jones Smith jumped in as the backup left tackle. And that's how they're practicing right now. So. Uh, it'll be interesting to kind of see, you know, camps right around the corner. I should say preseason games right around the cor corner. Scrimmage uh, with the Rams right around the corner, right? I think it's next week. So um, it'll be interesting, man. I'm really pumped up to kind of see how all that plays out. I'm really excited for preseason week one, man. There's so much news. There's so many great things out there. Um, and I'm pumped up, man. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up button. Smash that subscribe button. And I will see you guys next time with another video.